Today's project is not that happy and not that exciting. I've got a dead embroidery machine. Let me show you what's going on. So this is a Tajima TMFX C902. It's about a 1994 vintage. And I use it to test out my designs. Um, you can see I have some dive hats. And I sew my hats on this TMEX C1201, which is a single head 12 needle machine. I love my Tajimas but this one is not loving me. So um, I use this one for flats because I don't have the special driver and the cap frame that would go to this machine. I was supposed to get it when I bought it and I didn't get it. So the problem I've got is the machine's not responding. So when I turn it on, nothing happens. This is not what should be happening. I'm getting nothing here, neither of these lights. Now this light does flash. So there you go. So something's alive, but I'm not getting all the voltage I need. Now, I have taken this cover off and I actually took this head control unit off and tested the battery. It's 2.78 volts. Um, there's not a whole lot in the way of videos about testing diagnostics. So I'm gonna just kind of go through my thing. Um, there are two major variations of this machine. This is a non-UL one. A UL one would have an emergency stop, and one of the things you need to make sure is sometimes these can twist, you have to twist to unlock them, that one doesn't. But this machine never had one is what we determined. I uh, contacted PLR Electronics, they're dead to the world, and I also, uh, I gave them three days, still haven't heard back from them, it's been a week now. I also contracted Hirsch uh, in New Jersey, they called me back within two hours and told me they think it's a power board and that I should send it to so many parts. Uh, so many parts has been fantastic, I've bought parts from them in the past, in fact, I had to replace this bushing on that TMEX uh, earlier this year, and they've been really good. So. The problem we have is down here, and we've got a green on this and orange on these. This says that they're not getting a signal to wake up from the controller, which is consistent with the controller not being alive. So what we're going to do today is get in here and see what the heck's going on, see if we can see a problem. stay organized with my little magnetic tray holder for these screws I'm about to take out and it's worth noting if you're not comfortable around electronics or high voltages such as 110 or 220 volts don't do this get a tech to do it um, the thing I look at is uh, when I looked up the parts PLR wants $2,000 to repair this board. That is an absolute scam. They're taking advantage of the fact that the board's not available and charging an arm and a leg and then some which is fucking wrong. So anyway, let me get my uh, flashlight and we'll do it to it. All right, so we're just gonna do this by hand. And this thing is really not in a place that's conducive to being worked on. There are no manuals for what I'm doing. So um, I just kind of have to go by instinct, which is to get this box open so that I can do a visual inspection of the power circuit. What I'm anticipating is that this is 25 years old and the capacitors have given up the ghost. But we'll see. And that's what today is about.
course there's one under there, so. there which makes this easier to get at So now we need to disconnect the rear. label these but oh well, they are they are somewhat labeled but I still want to make a mark This is a voltage jumper. And this looks like the voltage input.
push a little bit on some of these screws because they're a little bit stuck. to get these it's just lovely all right this is what we really want So you need to be careful because even though the machine is off, there are high voltages associated with these capacitors. Very high voltages. Um, they did a great job of heat sinking this, but let's, you know, and I'm, I'm not seeing any, anything that looks like it's burned on here, but I really can't see a whole lot because these connectors are holding this card on. So let me go get another little screwdriver. Actually, yeah, I'll be right back. So I've added some video lights so that I can see what's going on in here and you can see what's going on in here. So essentially, this is the power cord. The power goes in and then it comes out on these connectors here to power up the S, X, and Y, which is sewing X and Y. These are more than like, the S board is gonna be something weird, but the X and the Y are just servo controls. So there's nothing magical going on here. And the nice thing is this power supply is actually pretty modular. So if you knew what the voltage requirements were that came off of here, you could very likely replace this with something else because it's isolated and they're using these jumper plugs that are on the outside of this case to actually do the work of moving the power out. Now, it's a multi-level power supply. It, it supplies multiple voltages and I suspect we've lost the 12 volt rail. That's actually what I think is going on. I see five volts, I see 26 volts. I don't see 12 volts on any of the pins. But we're gonna to get to the bottom of that today. So connector four is power in, connector three is voltage out to this. And this would be a whole lot easier if I had a schematic for it or some documentation, but uh, that's just not easy to get. And Tajima would rather sell you a whole new machine, which is an absolute travesty. It's an extremely well-made machine with the exception maybe this is not the best of designs you really shouldn't have a power supply integrated with controller cards because if something happens to power supply like it catches on fire, it's going to burn your controller cards. Um, let's see what we've got for... These are Nitsuka capacitors. I've never heard of them. They're really big capacitors. 470 microfarads at 220 volts. Eh, nothing, nothing super magical there. Um, it's enough that it could kick kick your butt in the next week but beyond that you know there's nothing magical there but where we're going to have issues is going to be on this power supply card and there's no reason that should be a two or three thousand dollar part that's obscene and that is price gouging there's just absolutely no reason it's just a power supply so let's get to the bottom of it and hope we don't have to re-engineer too much so we're going to use a little a little screwdriver and it's an embroidery screwdriver, as a matter of fact, from Ganold for a dollar something. And that gets those loose. And now we can kind of have a better look in here and see what's going on. So I'm gonna stop the camera because I can't get my head in here and get it on camera. So can't really see anything. So I'm gonna pull the card. And there are three, three millimeter Allen keys that hold the heat sink to the big heat sink on the bottom. It's a really well done heat sink. There is an optional fan on the bottom. And then let's see if we can pull this out. And the key thing here is don't touch nothing because it might be, it might have some voltage and it might say hello. So 
There's some slime on the bottom of this, but that's no big deal. Got three power fuses. I can't see nothing down here, so let me get this out of here. So, here we are where we can actually see things. And these don't seem, I don't see anything of consequence here. None of these are blown, at least visually. And I'm looking for baked components. at one time they had connectors here and they used jumper cables but they removed that and soldered them on and it's clearly designed for testing because it has test points right here and here so there's t clearly a diagnostic mo you know there's another one there um You know, it, it, it clearly is designed to be serviced or it would not have, you know, test points and it's got these L, the LED. So what we got to figure out is what is going on and why she quit working. Because, you know, we could have a bad transistor, although it's extremely unlikely. This is a little less than we'd like to see down here. I, I don't like to see separation of my heat sink comp or my heat transfer compound, but I don't see anything and that shouldn't be that close i don't see anything of concern and this has been running a long time so what i'm gonna do next is i'm gonna set my i have a fluke 37 multimeter it's sort of paddleboard but it's a good multimeter and we're just going to test All right, so that's open. That's a bad sign. So I think we have a bad fuse. And I'm not helping nothing. I think we got all these fuses are reading open. Well, that's just bizarre. That's really bizarre. Those shouldn't be reading open. Yeah, all three of these fuses are reading blown. This is that fuse. And I don't, I don't like the way these fuses are done, so if they have to be changed, it's really going to get changed. Um, so I've got every fuse reading blown. Let me just spin this. Diodes are looking good. Except this one.
So I've got Yeah, I don't know what these control points do. I do have some burned out diodes though, so there's something going on on this board. Because I've got diodes that aren't testing. There it goes. So I've got a couple of burned out diodes. Well, I don't know if they're burned or not, but they're they're certainly not producing. They're certainly not producing voltage, or uh, they're not showing that they pass current. There we go. I don't see anything obviously burned out on this. Only thing that was suspicious was this diode back here, D32. So let's see what D32 does. We'll just press harder. Yeah, D32 doesn't seem to do anything. There it goes. So it's, it's doing its job. Yeah, without a schematic, this is really, really difficult. So, and these are Nitsuka. There's decent capacitors, 50 volt, 2200 picofarads, 1000 picofarads, 35 volts. I mean, you know, none of this is really huge. 400 volt, 470 picofarads. You know, they, these guys deserve some respect because they're big, but... You know, I don't, I don't see anything that is, I don't see anything that explicitly um, is uh, looking bad here. In fact, I don't see anything burned out at all. You know, if one of these was bulging, I would say go ahead and replace all of them, but none of them are bulging. None of them are even close. So I don't think there's anything wrong with the capacitors. Um, honestly, I don't think there's anything wrong with this board at all. I think the problem's back up in the computer. And that's just a question of, is it not going to boot with with 2.78 volts? I would expect it to boot, but not um, have its settings. And absent a schematic, this is very, very difficult 
to diagnose and troubleshoot. This is kind of odd. It shows a little bit of potential leakage on these capacitors. So I would like to not see corrosion here. And that suggests maybe I do have some capacitor issues. So let's flip this over and look and see what's on top of this. Yeah, that's I've got a little bit of capacitor leakage going on here. So I would like to not see that. Um, You know, but this is nothing that, I mean, this is nothing that couldn't be cleaned up. So, I don't think this meter does capacitance. Pico amps, no. This meter doesn't. Let me see if the other. Further, you know, I think we've got a problem with some of these capacitors. I see one, two, three, four of them that are bad, maybe five. Um, I shouldn't see any corrosion on the bottom of these capacitors. But I don't have the meter I need to measure them in the circuit. And I don't want to go soldering anything that I don't absolutely have to solder. So um, I'm going to pause this video, but I want to do just a little more look-see. Yeah, these caps all look good. I don't see anything going on with these capacitors that indicates that they're bad. You know, what I'd be looking for is a little hole here, a little black hole that would tell me that cap has been, has vented, and I don't see that. I don't feel a bulge on any of these. And, um, you know, I don't think there's anything going on with these capacitors, but I'm gonna order the tool at 60 bucks. Um, you know, all these companies that work on this stuff are predatory, so I think I've got, some space to spend on tools to rule out whether this is the issue or not and it's gonna take me a couple days to get that in and get back to this um, you know not the end of the world no big hurry and this is a Nitsuko 50 volt 2200 microfarad capacitor it should say what series is it is but it doesn't um, and then these are mm, difficult to read the markings on and the big ones are the ones you really need to have some respect for. It doesn't say who makes them. No, no, it's a Nitsuko Black 400 volt, 470 microfarad, 85C. These are good spec capacitors. They can handle the voltage. They can handle the heat. Um, you know, and I wouldn't expect anything less from Tajima. Tajima is usually really 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 well built so i'm not 100 percent sure that this is the problem but we're going to get a capacitance meter because we got this out and we're going to test it um i hope you found this video interesting and you'll follow along i'm going to create a series called tajima diagnostics tfmx and uh, you can look for that um video playlist and please remember to subscribe and like my channel i know i work on a whole bunch of crazy stuff just bear with my ADD. Hey, squirrel. Um, no, seriously, I, I if I'm not going in 12 directions, I would be bored. So, um, you know, it might take me two weeks to get back to this, but I'm not in a hurry to get this machine up and running. It, it's more of a personal thing that the machine is not running and it, it hurts my feelings. So I got to figure out what's wrong with it. And there ain't no way in hell I'm giving them two or $3,000 to repair or replace a single board. And kiss my ass. I would reverse engineer this thing and replace it with a aftermarket power supply before I would pay that kind of money. But I don't think that's, I really don't think this is the issue. I think the problem is somewhere else, but I got it out. So I'm gonna rule out what's going on before we get any further. Thanks for watching.